Mira, mira, es called karma. A mí también. A mí me dicen que me pone, vaya chica, oh, no. Sí, no, no, no. Hi. Uh, today we doing amazing workshop. It's called um, opening ceremony for United Ambassador. Um, it's uh, our fair today in New York, and uh, I hope you will agree with us. And uh, we that's why the reason I put this live so you guys can see what's going on. But we are now in the United National Headquarters um, for the open ceremony. Comme l'habitude, nous allons voir un beau tous les bâtiments et tous les nébelés à passer pour un beau canapé. La place il y a distraction, c'est le moment qui vient sur tout pour le cas de façon il y a que produire something. And I want you guys to be connect 
to see what we're going, we are going to do. So today is amazing. Those are the connect. Very soon we're gonna start. Et je vois qu'opportunité peut être de commencer à interviewer mes balais. Je crois que oui après, on a on a une équipe pour ça la compte de diplomatie et tous les jeunes congolaises ou jeunes ou les alliés sans complexe, jeunes ou les alliés d'ambition pour la pour sauver beaucoup de ressources et après c'est tout petit petit que l'ambo qu'à qu'on a bah bah autorité de qu'à qu'on a bah politicien de de se payer bah jeunes tous ça aussi quelque chose il y a pour porter parce que toujours opportunité il y a pour il y a pour qu'un des nabis ici comme ceux ou les alliés d'ambition institution internationale ou les pays qui peuvent servir sur bah pour nous aider à développer le cannabis sur RDC Congo, nous avons une crise il y a l'économie, il y a l'éducation, il y a la santé, il y a les droits de l'homme, il y a la démocratie. Et nous avons une crise de l'économie, 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 nous avons une crise de donc, euh, like like pour tout aller là-bas pour la nous avons profité pour lancer appel à la jeune pour la Zali à Congo. Tout le monde a été dans le système qui va manipuler la jeunesse. La jeunesse est déjà venue à venir, allée, allée, venir allée, allée, y a le lobby. Ce qui est préparé à nous, le lobby, la jeunesse est déjà venue à Mawamingi. Donc, tout soutenir, tout le bateau et Abisso. Tant que vous avez besoin d'Abisso, tant que vous avez besoin de jeunesse, et c'est un peu plus bas et bas. Et le connu, il va vous apporter pour la jeunesse. Tout ça, c'est ce que la jeunesse congolaise, les congolais, congolais, ils vont faire mal à la vie. Ils vont faire mal à la vie. Ils vont faire mal à la vie. En même temps, il a besoin de la vie. Tout ce que vous avez toujours dans la vie. Il y a un moment où les jeunes Congolais et Congolais ne sont pas en responsabilité. Et si nous sommes allés pour travailler, ils sont dans l'église, ils sont dans le parti politique, ils sont dans le mouvement d'organisation de son rôle. Et si nous sommes allés, tant que nous sommes jeunes, nous sommes dans l'identité. Nous sommes dans l'identité. Nous sommes dans l'identité. Nous sommes dans l'identité pour développer le bimba. Nous sommes dans l'identité. Nous sommes dans l'identité. Nous sommes dans l'identité. Nous sommes dans l'identité. Pour que les gens puissent venir, 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 pour que et na surtout mingi makambeta li ba droit na biso to e ba neni ya komena ngona kati ya mboka na biso na kongo e to ko ki ko tizonga simate je crois bien mon besoin mon na zo tsaka ba live o yo ko bomu na elo ko mi to zali ko sala donc na za je ni mon côté ke non na o lo ba masolo ya mon ko na za combattant o ya zali ko bunde la mboka na ndenge ya mutu et si vous avez un quota, vous avez un quota. Et si vous avez un quota, vous avez un quota. 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 Vous voyez l'importance de sa jeunesse, beaucoup de sa jeunesse dans le travail, dans le programme, pour sans jeunesse, il ne faut pas marcher mal à l'autre. Parce que tout le monde est important pour la hiérarchie, de l'eau aux alouanes, le vie, nous sommes à cause de ça. Mais pour nous, nous avons travaillé mal à l'autre, nous sommes tous à l'autre préparé. Donc vraiment, nous avons besoin de nous faire des cérémonies. Vraiment, nous avons besoin de nous faire des dans ma interview de Sali à la carte à New York, au Hollande, au Tessala qui m'a dit que tout n'a pas été fait et de répondre à qui a mot pour n'a pas le cas. Et l'autre, on a dit qu'il n'y a pas de mal à tout à l'heure, secrétaire général des Nations Unies, il n'y a pas de rendez-vous, je crois, et que ça va dimanche, ce qui nous a battu ces chances, on a pas de mal à l'aise, on a pas de mal à l'aise, on a pas de mal à l'aise. You have to be connected, ladies and gentlemen. So, very soon, we are going to start.
thank you. Remember, we are, we we live. Yes. Everyone can watch you if you're in London. Je parle français. Tu parles français? Oui. Un peu, mais. Non, mais tu parles oui, parce que ton accent vraiment c'est bien. Oh, merci. Okay. Et j'étudie à l'Alliance pendant six ans. Ah bon? À l'Alliance française, oui. Et je suis France dans le. Oh, tu viens de France? Non, non, non. Et c'est mon pays pour okay, les. Ok, tu représentes. Ok, oui, je tu représentes. Ok, tu représentes le français. Avec elle. Ah, oh, avec elle. Oui. Oh, ouais, c'est bien. Oh, ok. Mais pourquoi pas tu peux dire depuis longtemps? Oui, depuis je ne savais pas que, que tu étais. Oh, tu ne savais pas que je parle français eh oui. Non, je parle français, tu parles bien parce que ma famille, elle habite en France et tous mes familles. Ah, où ouais. ah, À Paris. À Paris, où oui. je vais Tu as déjà visité Paris Eh oui, mais je, je vais habiter à Paris. Ok, tu veux, tu veux habiter en France Oui, je veux. Ok, tu veux. C'est mon destin. Ah, oh, ton destin, ok. okay. C'est ce que je veux, mais je ne sais pas parce que ma mère eh, ne me laisse pas. Ok, qu'est-ce que... pourquoi pas parce qu'elle dit qu'il y a beaucoup de attaques euh, terroristes. Oui, oui. Et oui, et elle m'a dit que c'était très dangereux. Oui, oui, oui. Et cinquième, je, non, dixième, je ne sais pas comment ça en France. Tu es dans quel âge Et j'ai 6 ans, 16 ans. Tu as 16 ans. Oui. Ah, 16 ans. Donc tu es bientôt plus haut. C'est dans deux ans, tu auras tu 18 ans. Oui, ah, euh, je vais étudier à la Sorbonne, la Sorbonne. à Paris, ah, okay. mais c'est mon rêve, je ne sais pas si ça deviendra réalité. Ah, non, c'est pourquoi pas Parce que c'est très difficile, parce que je vais étudier à Loire, et dans, mes pays, dans mon pays, ce n'est pas le même pourquoi système. Pourquoi tu penses que c'est impossible mais moi, je Parce sais que, que ma mère m'a dit que c'est difficile pour moi. Euh... Non, ta mère, ce n'est pas toi est-ce que ta mère est là devant le lycée Elle veut que j'étudie en Équateur. En Équateur Oui. Quel est le Équateur Sud-Amérique. Sud-Amérique Ok. So, euh, J'ai une question. Est-ce que ton mère, elle a déjà visité les Nations Unies Elle a déjà venu aux Nations Unies Non. Non. Tu vois les grandes différences Mais toi, tu es 16 ans, tu es ici. Oui, mais c'est avec toutes mes amis, ce n'est pas une chose spéciale. C'est spécial. Toi, tu penses que ce n'est pas spécial, mais je te dis, c'est spécial. Je te dis, prends-moi un jour, tu dois, me, tu dois penser à moi, tu dois dire, ah, j'ai rencontré quelqu'un qui s'appelle Tati et il a dit, me dire c'est ça. C'est spécial. Tu sais pourquoi c'est spécial Là, toi, tu sais mieux, c'est les ministres qui sont mieux ici. Les ministres, les, les présidents, c'est pas moi. Mais avoir cette opportunité, c'est pas facile. C'est pas facile, oui, je là, sais. Là, tu habites, là où toi, tu habites, il y a beaucoup de gens, on te mange. Ils ne oui. sont pas arrivés dans ce niveau que toi, tu Peut-être, oui. Mais on va voir, parce que ma mère aussi dit que Paris, c'est un ville très grand pour euh, commencer. Et je pense que je vais étudier à Marseille, au Lyon, peut-être oui, euh, Nice, et quand j'ai grand, grandi, ouais, et quand j'étais un peu, un peu plus grande, et oui, Paris. Oui. Euh, peut-être, le, comment c'est dit, les études après l'université, comme le master. Ouais, tu vois, un master degree. Tu ouais. vois, tu vois, tu es un tu es 16 ans, mais tu parles français, tu parles anglais, tu parles aussi quelle langue et Espagnol. Espagnol. C'est trois. Tu es l'âme, français, l'anglais, espagnol. Tu es riche. Bien, merci. Es, oui, tu es totalement riche. Tu es riche parce que la linguistique, la linguistique, c'est riche. Tu peux travailler en Nations Unies et tu peux traduire français ou l'anglais. C'est le même. Pas même. Ouais, Peut-être, euh, je, je pense que mon. Je vais étudier loi avec euh, trois internationales. Mm -hmm. Peut-être. Et so je, je peux Hi, avoir so un peu de you know, la loi et aussi la politique. Sure okay. We're very excited to begin. Thank you. Thank you. I think most of our delegates are already here.
Yeah, it's a live stream. So people can join in from London, I think, he said. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone, distinguished delegates, observers, advisors. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you to the United Ambassadors Model UN Conference at the United Nations Headquarters in New York, 2018. to report that today in the Economic and Social Council Chamber, we're welcoming a little over 400 delegates from around 90 countries from around the world to the UN headquarters in New York for our opening ceremony. I'm personally very excited to be back in the ECOSOC Chamber because our very first conference held at the UN headquarters in New York in 2016 also had its opening ceremony in the Economic and Social Council Chamber. Uh, it's emotional to be back here now in 2018. And once again, we're incredibly excited to welcome you to this edition of UAMUNC. This conference uh, started three years ago, and over these three years, it has developed greatly in so many ways. This edition of UAMUNC is particularly special and unique because for the first time, we are offering the world's most accurate simulation at the United Nations, General Assembly, Security Council, International Court of Justice, and high-level political forum of the Economic and Social Council, which we're in, uh, at the United Nations and the Grand Hyatt Hotel. We also have our pioneering MUN Action Initiative and Committee, which is the development or evolution of the conference we were holding in the previous years, referred to as the MUN Youth Assembly. I am so proud of all of our delegates who are here today. I want to thank you for the effort you put into preparing for this conference, flying in from around the world, halfway across the world. I know everyone is probably jet lagged. We have a very, very intense four days. Uh, today, here, and tomorrow, we begin our committee sessions. Without further ado, I am very, very happy to welcome our keynote speakers for the opening ceremony, starting with Ms. Maria Fare from the UN SDG Action Campaign. Thank you, Navina. Thank you for all of you for being here. Um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, fellow change makers, friends, I am delighted to welcome you on behalf of the UN SDG Action Campaign to the opening of the United Ambassadors Model UN Conference here at the UN headquarters in New York. As you know, the UN is the house of all of the world. So allow me to say, welcome home. Oh. As a young conference participant, in the coming days, you will have the chance to do your best during the committee sessions to reach a common agreement and cooperate to find productive, viable, and sustainable solutions to various issues that will be discussed in the course of the conference. As such, you will first-hand experience and represent the positions and interests of different member states. 
and we'll see that reaching an agreement is not always easy. In a similar, although more real way, uh, almost three years from now, member states gather in these same premises to negotiate what is now the 2030 Agenda, containing the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. The new 2030 Agenda was the product of a peaceful and in-depth negotiation preceded by a large global consultation which allowed people, and especially youth, from all over the world to share their views on what issues should be addressed in the coming 15 years. During the phase of the consultation in 2015, the UN SDG Action Campaign created the My World 2015 survey, which showed that it is possible to bring the people's voices into the heart of global policy making. Over 1,000 civil societies partnered Partners helped to bring the survey to 10 million citizens across the world. It was the power of participation of young people like you who made the difference. Furthermore, thanks to the collective data, we together were able to show that having an honest and transparent government was a priority for the people. And that it is in part why we now have the goal 16 on peace, justice, and strong institutions. As you can see, participation and engagement matter. The transformative essence of the 2030 Agenda calls for a broad-based ownership, and, this, and in this sense, we want to invite you all to take this conference just as a starting point to continue your engagement with the UN, to advance the goals at your national and local levels. We invite you to take action during the upcoming Global Day of Action on September 25th to celebrate and commemorate the day when the agenda was adopted, to keep the momentum on action until the 2030 agenda becomes a reality. We encourage you to have a look at, at Act for SDGs, get involved and take action. We look forward to know what the result of the conference will be and to continue working together to make progress to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. I wish you a fruitful and enjoyable experience and overall, don't forget to have fun. Thank you. Ms. Catherine Tinker from the Tinker Institute on International Law and Organization. Greetings. Thank you, Nabila. Thank you for the honor of the invitation to join all of you here today for the opening ceremony of this important model United Nations. When I was in junior high and high school, I was a Model UN participant as well, representing India one year and Brazil another year. So I know where you're sitting, and it's a wonderful way to begin your careers. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Just a word about what the Tinker Institute does with our interns and fellows. We bring energy, um, ideas to the work of the UN since we were created in 1992 for the Earth Summit in Rio. We participated in the CSD, Commission on Sustainable Development, the Rio Must Plus 20 conference on sustainable development, and all the years of meetings that we were just talking about, Maria, for the creation of the SDGs. And now we come back every year for the high-level political forum the entity of the United Nations responsible for the monitoring and implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. But no one can do it alone. No state can do it alone. And that's why each one of us is responsible and each one of you must commit to the values and the pledges, the goals and the targets in the SDGs. It's really the future of our life on the planet and the planet itself. At the Seton Hall University School of Diplomacy and International Relations, I teach international law, if you haven't guessed yet, <laughs> international law, human rights, international environmental law, and uh, sustainable development as well. So today, we are all here at the UN, that great institution of multilateralism, created 75 years ago at the end of World War II, 
built on the ashes of that world war to embody the hopes and aspirations of that generation. Peace, security, equality, human rights, and prosperity for all. These values were embodied then in the great documents adopted, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the Two Covenants, the treaties that have been negotiated, adopted, entered into force, and implemented here through the work of the UN and the related treaty bodies. And the customary law, the agreements, not to forget the importance of voluntary commitments by states as well. It doesn't always have to be a treaty. And you heard an international law professor say that. Voluntary commitments are extremely important. Binding promises, pledges. We saw that in Paris with the Paris Agreement. These things matter. And that's the heart and soul of multilateralism and its institutions and the diplomacy that takes place in a group like here today and in the ones that we'll be meeting in the same room in September when the new session of the General Assembly begins again here in New York. The path to achieve these values is through cooperation. The mutual benefit and strength gained from the peoples of the world working together to achieve a better life by discussing world problems and finding global solutions. Fairness, equity, respect, non-discrimination, and the rule of law all principles of diplomacy and international law that are enacted here every day at the United Nations. In the General Assembly, each member state has a vote and each state is equal, no matter its economic or geographic size or condition. The UN is pledged to uphold the equal rights of all persons, no matter their race, religion, ethnicity, gender, or membership, in political or social groups. In the General Assembly at ECOSOC, specialized work is done on economic, social, and environmental challenges facing the world today, all issues that no state alone can solve or manage, climate change and its effects, gender equity, migration and refugees, the rights of vulnerable groups worldwide. And in the Security Council, a small number of member states debate security issues, crimes against humanity, human trafficking, and other issues. This so-called humanistic multilateralism I've been describing, or people's multilateralism, along with the member states and of the United Nations, includes representatives of civil society and other stakeholders <coughs> acting in partnership. From the beginning, in the United Nations Charter, the role of NGOs, non-governmental organizations, was guaranteed. But that work and our presence here in the UN has expanded and grown through trying to address these global challenges that you will be working on this weekend together. Multilateralism today means a broadening of the state-centered system to include the voices of we the peoples directly in the decisions and the implementations of the policies and the international law created here in this room and in the adjacent rooms in the UN. So today, I leave you with several thoughts. It is your turn to lead. You must commit to study and live the principles in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the UN Charter, declarations, covenants, treaties, and the 2030 Agenda on Sustainable Development. You must help to define at every level, back home, in regional and in global meetings, what policy agendas and laws will be adopted after 2030, and whether in fact we will achieve those goals in the SDGs by 2030 itself. Your generation deserves a healthy planet in ecological balance, social justice for all, and freedom from armed conflict for the rest of your lives and for the lives of your children and grandchildren. But you must each work for it and defend these values or they will disappear. Peace and justice are never guaranteed. Unite, 
empower yourselves and each other. Make it happen. It's up to you. Good luck. Thank you so much for passion for that inspiring speech. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Omar Hernandez, consultant from the UN Department of Public Information and UN Academic Impact. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Nabila El Azar, United Ambassadors Founder and CEO. Ms. Maria Fare from the UN SDG Action Campaign. Ms. Catherine Tinker from the Tinker Institute of International Law and Organizations. Fellow delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I address to you with pleasure on behalf of the United Nations Academic Impact, UNAI. This is an initiative of the Outreach Division of the Department of Public Information here in New York launched to foster the partnership and the relationship between universities and the United Nations. We need innovative approaches and better solutions for the challenges in front of us. Collaboration with universities has proven to be fundamental over the past few years and has also broadened the notion of multilateralism. Ours is an initiative that aligns institutions of higher education with the United Nations in supporting and contributing to the realization of its goals and mandates. We serve as a bridge between the UN and the universities. As such, we have created a vibrant network of professors, researchers, and students all over the world. Today, we have almost 1,250 member institutions, universities, in around 130 member states. And every single one of those universities is strongly committed to the realization of the Sustainable Development Goals of the SDGs. Worth to mention that Resolution 71 of the United Nations General Assembly, already referred to by my fellow panelists, makes very concrete reference to universities. Let me highlight, though, that in one specific paragraph, paragraph 45 of that document, it is considered that universities are valuable stakeholders, and it calls actually governments and public institutions to work closely on implementation with academia. And the key word here for me is implementation. Universities are not passive actors or mere theoretical providers, but instead they are fundamental collaborators to advance the SDGs. They are fundamental drivers of innovation and the foundation for sustainable development overall. Of course, students like you, even at the high school level, are key players for awareness and for action-oriented solutions. So we, and by we I mean we the UN, we the government, we must hear you, we must hear the students. Modern UN conferences are a wonderful opportunity to hear the students and for them to understand the international system, to navigate the waters of multilateral diplomacy, and to increase the knowledge about current world affairs. They also foster collaboration and cooperation and they heavily support the idea that we are all global citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, as we recall from the Charter of the United Nations, as my previous colleague spoke, it starts with we the people. This is a powerful message drafted almost 75 years ago and is still valued today. It is the basis for global citizenship. But it is simply a recognition of mankind. It's a recognition that beyond borders, languages, cultures, and religions, we live on the same planet. And I think we all agree that we need global citizens to address global issues. Mother UN do help tremendously in this regard. To realize in a very practical way that we need to work together as we share common goals. And actually, and this is a personal story, my journey in connection to the United Nations started as a delegate for the Mother UN. I came as a kid to this building in New York with my parents as tourists. But it was on the UN in Geneva where I participated in my very first Model UN when I was still studying international studies. That allowed me later to create the first Model UN in Venezuela, my home country, for universities, which is still running today. When I saw the flags of the Palais de Nations, which is the UN headquarters in Geneva, I said to myself, one day I will work with the United Nations. But nothing happened for a long while. I became a professor of international law and international journalism, of course, pushed by my students, helping Mother UN student delegations and even traveling with them 
to model UN conferences in many countries, such as Mexico and the United States. I became involved with in NGOs and had the opportunity to participate in a number of trainings on human rights at the UN in Geneva. Later, as an international news analyst, I had the privilege to be a correspondent at the UN in Geneva for three years in a row, covering the UN Human Rights Council. I even was an intern here at the UN in New York twice. And then the dream became my reality. I landed into my first job at the UN as a consultant with the UN Office of Drugs and Crime in Vienna, providing, and this is a twist of destiny, my expertise precisely on Mother UN. That was my first job, to talk about Mother UN, and drafting a guide for Mother UN organizers and delegates, which was published, if I'm not mistaken, in February this year, and it's available online for those of you who might be interested. Then I moved to Bonn, Germany, to work with the UN Climate Change Secretariat until early this year. And here I am. Ladies and gentlemen, the topics you will discuss this weekend on this conference are current and relevant. All of them tackle the SDGs from various perspectives. I encourage you to go beyond your research, beyond your binders, to internalize that yes, you represent different countries, member states, yes, you have different foreign policies, and yes, you have different positions. But, and this is the most important yes, yes, you do share the concerns for the same issues. Next month, this headquarters of the UN will be full of heads of state and governments from most of the member states of this organization. For those of us who work here at the UN, it will be a very crazy and complex time. The world will pay attention once again to what will happen here. That said, be proud that you are here today. Dialogue, learn, enjoy the experience. The world will continue tomorrow and the day after and the day after that and so on and so forth. But what kind of world that's basically on your hands? Welcome to the United Nations, which is your home. I thank you very much. very much, Mr. Hernandez, for that inspiring speech. Before we move on, um, amidst everything, I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> My name is Nabila el -Assar. I'm the founder and academic director of United Ambassadors and the United Ambassadors and UN Conference. This is my 16th year in Model United Nations, um, and I am currently completing a master's degree in education at Stanford University alongside an executive certification in nonprofit leadership at Harvard University part-time. United Ambassadors is an international education organization based and registered in the states of New York and California, USA. Um, it has a mission of building tomorrow's leaders and global youth citizens through Model UN and UN education. Our conferences and programs are held at the UN office in Geneva, Switzerland, the UN headquarters in New York, and Dubai, UAE, as well as different training camps that we hold around the world. Um, I'm very pleased to introduce this conference's Secretary General, Renata Alvarenga, who will also be speaking right after this segment of the opening ceremony. Um, I just want to give you a message before we even continue. I wanted to thank once again our speakers for their time and effort coming here and briefing everyone. Um, this conference is an accurate simulation of the United Nations. But we are doing this work and we believe it can change the world and it can inspire its participants solely based on our belief that when our delegates join this conference, they will leave with an inspiring goal or message or mission for the future. Every speech we heard today, we emphasize the importance of cooperation and commitment, voluntary commitment by UN member states if the sustainable development goals are to be achieved by the year 2030. Through UAMUNT, which is an accurate simulation of the United Nations, we hope that you will learn a few things. This conference has four keywords, and I wanted to mention them in our opening ceremony. The four keywords of UAMUNT are, number one, consensus. Number two, diplomacy, which is one of the most important skills that you can learn, regardless of what career path you choose for your future, whether it's in the UN, at a university, uh, at a company, in finance, in marketing, diplomacy is an invaluable skill that you can
can learn through this conference and through accurate simulations of the United Nations. The third keyword is cooperation, because the delegates we will recognize and we will notice are those who encourage cooperation between all of the participants of our committee. And the fourth keyword is development. We are all here to develop one way or another. Every single edition of our conferences, every time I think I've seen everything, there is nothing else to learn, that is it. After 16 years in Model United Nations, every single conference teaches me something new. Through every conference, I develop the most. I learn the most out of all of our delegates and participants. Everyone here is here to learn something. Remember that throughout these next four days, Take every opportunity you can to develop, to learn, to question yourself, to question what you know, what you think you know, to question everything, and to develop. And leave with new connections, with new friends, with new memories, and with a new goal for what you want to do with the rest of your life. How can you have impact? How can you change the world? Because regardless of what you do, we all can in our circle, one way or another. Another thing that was mentioned during the speeches, and I want to thank our speakers once again, is that we encourage you to understand, live, and embody the values and principles in the UN Charter, in the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, and in that the UN stands for in general. Thank you all once again very, very much for being here today. I would like to thank our speakers. Without further ado, I would like to introduce two special messages from the UN Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres and Ms. Jayatma Rukramanayaka, the UN Envoy on Youth, who was, who hoped to be here today, but she is unfortunately not at the UN. She is on leave. They both have messages for you. Thank you for taking part in the modern United Nations. Our world enjoys remarkable opportunities to advance common progress. Sustainable development goals are our blueprint for dignity, prosperity, and a healthy planet. But we, the people, face many challenges from armed conflicts to the nuclear threat, and climate change is moving faster than we are. Inequality is on rise, while solidarity is on decline. And so multilateralism is more important than ever. Empowering young people is an imperative. As you stand up for our shared values, United Nations stand to you. Please accept my best wishes for a successful Model United Nations conference. Our next video message is from Ms. Jayatma Ukramanaika, the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Youth. Um, I met her recently to discuss our initiative, MUN Action, which we are launching at this conference, an initiative that where young students, young people attending our conference draft, can draft a resolution that can be implemented in real life on how young people can contribute to building peaceful, inclusive societies worldwide through the use of technology. This initiative is particularly important to us and to me. Um, it's also something that we discussed with the SDG Action Campaign. And so I very much look forward to the ideas that our delegates will come up with at our MUN Action Campaign. Mm -hmm. Very warm greetings to all of you. My name is Jacqueline Kamanaka and I'm the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Youth. I am pleased to send this video message to the delegates attending the United Ambassadors Model United Nations Conference. I would first like to commend all the young participants in this room for dedicating your time and effort to learning about the processes and values of the United Nations. Your presence here today means that you are taking initiative and leadership in achieving the change you want to see in the world, and for that, I am truly appreciative. As young people, we are a generation with unyielding energy, new ideas, and refreshing optimism. 
It is only through our voices and innovation that we can begin to tangibly make a difference both in local communities and at the global level. This especially includes all of you. By participating in the United Ambassadors and UN Conference and all its committees, you are taking a critical step towards becoming change makers and problem solvers through emulating real case scenarios. I would also like to commend those attending the MUN Action Committee and look forward to hearing your ideas on how young people can serve as real drivers towards building peaceful, inclusive societies and utilizing technology to promote SDG 16 and all the sustainable development goals. I wish you great success in your deliberations and look forward to working together with you in the future. Thank you. So, Mr. Omar Hernandez will be staying with us throughout the remainder of the ceremony, which is amazing. Uh, and I'm going to invite all of our senior secretaries to the podium. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Renata Alvarenga, and I'm the Secretary General of the United Ambassadors, Modern United Nations Conference, New York, 2018. 